Adam Taxon here with more about uh, Michael Brown, Ferguson, etc. This is a story that is trickling, starting to make the rounds. I don't know if it really will, but it really says something about the sense of priorities and why Mike Brown may have gotten to become the way he was. Um, it's called, uh, first of all, it's the conservativetreehouse.com. Make sure you have the, the in there. But it's called... Um, Priorities. Mike Brown body lays in unmarked grave as parents jet set around making money off his death. And uh, it was posted by someone who goes by the name Sundance. A lot of pictures there. But it says, uh, here's a start. Uh, perhaps Mike Brown's mom, Leslie McSpadden, is too busy coordinating the next t-shirt promotion. There's a link to that. Or perhaps Mike Brown Sr. is too busy scheduling the next private jet trip to Europe while meeting with celebrities to grift more money from his death. Regardless of reasoning, Mike Brown's body, uh, well, I, I wonder if he chose that phrase on purpose because there's obviously the book, John Brown's body, or a poem or something like that. Mike Brown's body remains in unmarked grave three months after his death. Amazing. Uh, you, know, you know, this hasn't happened to me much, but I actually feel a little bit of sympathy for Mike Brown if that's, if that's what his parents are like. But a CNN writer had visited the cemetery and you know, wrote, I guess, kind of florally, uh, the CNN writer wrote, I follow the footprints, footprints to a small bouquet of plastic flowers, red and purple, planted in the ground, and here's the big line, there is not yet a headstone at Brown's grave. I stand where Brown's parents wailed as their son's casket was lowered on October, August 25th into a copper vault, 16 days before he had been shot dead by Ferguson police officer Darren Wilson. Credit to CNN for not using the word murder. I don't think anyone disputes that he was shot dead, uh, but they did not use murder, which is significant. One minute, the 18-year-old stood six feet four. The next, he fell to the ground on Canfield Drive. His blood colored the dull asphalt. I, I think we all know that story. Um, here, here uh, Conservative Treehouse writes, this is an all too familiar pattern in the nationally publicized deaths of both Trayvon Martin and Michael Brown, both sets of parents too caught up in the merchandising and financial exploitation of the death to actually pay respects to the short lived life. I don't know if that's entirely true in Trayvon Martin's case, because from what I understand, his father was not such a bad father and his stepmother actually did a pretty good job with him. I've heard nothing of the sort with Michael Brown, but I heard that Trayvon Martin's problems really came when uh, he was taken from his, he was moved from his father and stepmother, the stepmother really being a good parent, and took, uh, you know, took up residence with his mother, who, well, you've seen her on TV, you can pr pretty much read between the lines. Uh, conservative Treehouse writes, grief takes a back seat where there's the potential for celebrity and financial gain. Um, and as usual, there are some really good comments. One, you know, actually, is fair, you know, to be fair, uh, Eastern to Western says, they could be ordering a very expensive headstone. I remember the time I ordered my father's tombstone. It took them a couple of weeks because of the supply. Fair enough, even though it's been three months. Um, and then someone makes a similar point. I don't defend Michael Brown or his family, but my child's father's autopsy results took seven months. I doubt this man had any type of life insurance, but in our case, the life insurance claim couldn't be finalized without the cause of death. And once the cause of death was established and the money was available, it still took three months to get the stone and get it set. Not everything is an easy process, just something to think about. Um, later on, there's another interesting point. Um, where is this? Yeah, oh, on, on a more general sense, Quad G Moto says, so let me guess, that Stop Killing Us t-shirt is directed as blacks, the primary killers of blacks by a vast margin, right? Right? Yeah, I know what the intended point in it is. I just can't help pointing out the giant redwood log in these uh, hypocrites' eyes. And then he puts uh, in there in a separate comment to that original comment, uh, he goes off on uh, Michael Brown's mother. Oh, and as for her... He was special to me, shirt. If he was so precious to her, why didn't she teach him the difference between right and wrong? But Tulane response to that be kind of hard since he was living with grandma. And then Quajimoto responds to that by saying, LOL, I guess that means he was really special to her. And Lulu adds, uh, he was not uh, welcome to live with mom in her shack up. He bunked with buddies in another city and visited grandma in Ferguson. It was during such a visit that he strong-armed the little guy in the convenience store and the rest is history. 
how quickly those inconvenient details were swept under the rug. Just another thing to think about when uh, you're watching the so-called mainstream media. You won't get that information. And uh, March Gunderson uh, says, her shack up just returned from prison. At 38 years old, he's been incarcerated since the, since the age of 19. He's a crackhead and a drug trafficker. And now he'll continue to live off the taxpayers with the civil suit winnings. The media conveniently ignored this too. Anyhow, uh, there will be plenty of developments in this, I'm sure, though it's possible this is all being overhyped as a cover for Obama's amnesty move. Uh, and uh, you may want to subscribe to ataxin.com, A-T-A-X-I-N, on YouTube. Thanks.